Hi everyone, welcome to another video from our series um, regarding face masks. So since we are all battling with the coronavirus, I decided to do a little series on DIY projects to enhance your protection. So um, just like we mentioned so far, the mouth and nose masks are what protects us to some degree. I decided to make most of these masks really as simple as they can be so that even if you're a complete beginner, you can still give it a shot and get a decent result out of it, as well as practice, of course. So sadly, this cannot guarantee perfect protection and of course, no mask can keep you perfectly safe. And this goes for every video in this series and pretty much for every mask there is out there. So even the ones you can buy, so they at least protect you a bit, just like the ones you can buy or order online, but these can be done at home in a matter of minutes, which makes them really accessible. So you will need some fabric leftovers. So as far as fabric goes, whatever you find comfy will work. I'll do cotton because then I can wash it and reuse it. So if you want to do the same, I recommend something that can withstand a higher temperature when washed. So above 60 degrees Celsius would be perfect. Cotton works great for this, so this is why I'm using it as well. And it won't get weird after you wash it a couple of times, which means that you can reuse it more than once. Of course, you can do an inside layer and an outside layer. You can even do one or multiple middle layers out of fleece or whatever you want or have. There are many tutorials online on how to do this. Um, I decided to show you my version this time. So this is something I came up with. So you see here we have two times the outside and the one inside layer here. Before I do this, I'll test it, of course, so I'm putting my layers together and I'm going to hold it over my mouth and nose to check if the fabric is good, if it allows me to breathe while still covering my mouth and nose. So before you start any project like this, make sure to check it out and see if it is still breathable while protecting you. Then you're going to need some elastic band you have or want, and I recommend anything stretchy. Your fabric scissors, of course, regular scissors, your hand gauge or ruler, and some pins, of course, regular pins. So this is a bit more complicated, so I sketched it so that I can make it as easy as possible to understand. So first off, this is a mask for adults. We'll do a separate one for kit sizes. We start with a triangle that's 13.5 centimeters times 13, and that's it. So that's five inches times a bit over five inches. And then I marked several points on here. So on the right side from the top and bottom, I measured three centimeters or 1.2 inches and I marked. That way we get the end where our band will go. Then on the other side, but this time from the top, I did 1.5 centimeters on the top side or half an inch and on the left side I did 3.5 centimeters or 1.4 inches and I marked that too. From the bottom I did 8.5 centimeters or almost 3.5 inches and I marked there as well. I did the same on the bottom with 3.5 centimeters or 1.4 inches and I'll show you the whole thing so that you can pause this and sketch it with me and then you can also see the red marks, so the red lines I pulled in between. That's how I connected all of the marks and sides to get my finished or final shape. So I just connected the marks here and you can see I rounded them a little bit in some areas so that it's prettier and nicer in the end. Then you can cut it out and you'll get the same shape just without the extra unneeded corners. So this is always just one half of it. So for one mask layer, you will need this two times, so mirrored. So you can do this by just folding the fabric and then cut this out. And also make sure to leave one inch or 1.5 centimeters for your stitches on all sides so that the mask doesn't get too small when you stitch it all up. Here is my cutout fabric, so you see the layers now. 
this is the inside and here is my outside so I have it four times so that I can do two layers out of it and I will first explain the first step which is aligning all pieces pretty side on pretty side So this is what I mean and you can see that they are perfectly aligned and then you can just stitch this round edge so the round section that you see here um, and when you do this you almost have the whole thing done. So then you can kind of already try it on and see this is round because that's um, where your mouth and nose are supposed to fit and do this with the inside and outside layers both. If you're doing two layers and no middle ones, then it's even easier. Just stitch um, this edge up that you see. And if you're doing three layers or one middle layer, then you can put these like this. And do this edge as well so that this middle layer stays in the right shape. Then you can take your other two pieces and align them and stitch this round edge again all together. And now you can take this apart a bit and fix the leftover fabric on the outside of the stitch just so they aren't sticking together. Now you can align the inside and outside and you can even just turn it and try it out on your face. So just put it over it and see if it fits. It should be a bit bigger than you'd like it because we're still not done with the stitching. And then you can take this finished stitch. So when you finish it, do the left and the right side with an extra stitch to keep it neat and flat. And you can do the same with the inside fabric, but this is purely optional in both cases. Now the next step is to put the two pieces pretty side on pretty side so that they are also nicely aligned. Take care especially for the stitches. You want them really aligned. So you want the round section nice and neat. And then you can just connect all open edges. So all around the whole thing that you have. And of course, as always, leave a little opening somewhere so that you can turn it later. And I recommend pinning this before you do it because it will just make everything easier. So the corners I already fixed so that they are easier to turn and then we can turn it inside out. So you don't want the two inside layers out. Um, so just make sure that you go between the right layers before you get started. So make sure you are turning it the right way. So after turning this inside out, you can iron over it or you can do an extra stitch on all edges. So just along the existing stitch and then you will flatten the fabric and close the opening at the same time. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You can just iron over it and it'll be just fine too. So you have two options how to do this. And now you can of course check if you like the roundness and the shape and generally if you're enjoying how it's looking for now. So this is kind of a sneak peek before the end. Um, yeah, and then I'll do that extra stitch I was telling you about. And now that I did this, so I already closed the opening here. And now you can take this and fold over. So to the inside. 
and you can do just a regular straight stitch here so that you have a little loop or a little tunnel that you can go through and you do the same on the other side. And that's where your band will go through. And before you do that, you can of course also check if the width is okay and if needed, you can always adjust the size so you can make it smaller or you can make it bigger or even doubled. Our last step is to push the band through so you see what this looks like for now. And I'll show you, um, so just cut the band for an adult size, you're gonna need about 27 centimeters, I think that's about 10 inches. So this of course um, depends on your band, on its stretchiness. For kids it would be around 23 centimeters or about 9 inches. And then you'll need a safety pin and make sure it fits through your tunnel before you start pushing it through. And push through. Our last step. So I just pushed both ends out of the tunnel here and I tied them in a knot. And now I'll try to hide the knot inside the fabric. And our mask is officially done, so this is the end result that we get. The round shape is really pretty in my opinion, I can definitely say it's comfy to wear, and I hope this helped you a little bit. I know that not everyone can buy masks or even order them online at the moment, but of course you can make your own at home, and I hope this was easy enough. If you should have any questions or any comments, you can of course comment below the video so the comment section is as always open. As I already probably mentioned, I'm going to do a couple more videos that are going to be about masks and other protection DIYs that you can do in these crazy times. So I hope this brings you a hobby as well as some protection too. So anyway. I hope you guys like today's masks. If you do, you can of course shoot us a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye!